define colonial life. And so we talked about 13 colonies, and then we discussed uh, shops that they had during colonial times. And so today we will discuss colonial schools. Well, this week we're discussing colonial schools. Okay, so we're on page 57, and so we'll just go through that. So if the towns were large enough, there was a school for the children to attend. Some towns were still growing and they did not have a school yet. Learning was very important to colonial families and many of colonial children were taught to read at home. So remember, now we have schools like all over our cities, but in colonial times, the cities, the towns were a lot smaller. So if the town was big enough, though, they would have a school. And if not, the parents taught their children at home, kind of like right now, your home and your parents are helping you out with all of your work right now. And so I guess we could say we kind of are getting an idea of what colonial schooling was like somewhat. So... Uh, most, colon most colonists were farmers and they did not have machines that farmers have today. So when a job had to be done on the farm, the children would go and help. They did most of their learning during seasons. So they would learn in a certain season and then another season, which was like harvest season, when all the crops were, you know, the crops had grown and they needed to go get all the crops, that's when they wouldn't go to school. So would you like that? You know, like being able to work with your parents and help them out during certain year, times of the year and then only a certain time of the year you go to school because now we go to school for 10 months. So imagine that, like going to school only for a few months, but then those other months you have to work. You know, think about it. Which one would you like? Would you just like regular school we do now? or the way they did it in colonial times, right? So harvest and spring planting were times when colonial children would work um, on the farms with their parents. And so because farms were larger and more spread apart in the Southern colonies, there were not many schools. Parents in some areas of the South started to get teachers to, together to hire teachers. So some of the parents would get together and they would um, group together and they would hire a teacher that would teach all their children and that, it, that's for towns that didn't have schools. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and go to page 58. So remember, there were no cars and buses during colonial days, so how did they get to school? They walked to school. Many times colonial children would walk three or four miles to a schoolhouse, so yeah, they would walk where they needed to go. They didn't have cars and buses and all of that. They had to walk. So learning was so important to colonial families that there were six school days each week. Even Saturday was a school day. So remember, learning was important to them. So they would go to school six days a week and they would only take off on Sundays. I think we might have to do that in our class. Maybe go to school. We'll talk about it on our Zoom. But yes, they would go to school six days a week. So that included Saturday as well. So in colonial schoolhouses, a man called the schoolmaster was the teacher. For a long time, schoolhouses were only one room, and that's what that picture is showing you here. So it was one room that all the children would go, that they would learn in. That was their classroom. And so not only that, but they had different ages and grades inside of that one classroom because some children did go to school, but a lot of children learned from home as well. Okay, and so all the children were taught in that same room together at the same time. So in some schools, the children sat on benches instead of desks, and there were a few blackboards and maps. And if they did not have paper, students wrote on pieces of bark from like birch trees. So during the winter, a fireplace warmed, and that's the fireplace right here, warmed the schoolhouse, and every child took turns bringing firewood from home to school. So that was their way of going to school during that time. So reading was very important to the colonists and parents wanted their children to be able to read the Bible, of course. All right, so let's look at 59. And so this is kind of just a did you know. So the first book a colonial child learned to read from was not really a book at all. It was called a horn book and that's it right here, okay? And so a thin sheet of paper with a reading lesson written on it was placed on a piece of wood. Over this was placed a thin sheet of animal horn, which you could see through. Small children would hold their horn books and learn their ABCs. Then the most widely used school book in all of America was the New England Primer. This book taught each letter of the alphabet with a rhyme, and many of the rhymes were used uh, about Bible stories. So like A, in Adam's fall, we send all, and then Z, Zacchaeus, he did climb a tree, his Lord to see. And so the horn book contained letters of the alphabet 
and um, they matched it to, to help them memorize the alphabet and then they would find like something from the Bible, like with A, Adam, Z, Zacchaeus. So that's pretty cool. So <clears throat> to protect the paper, because it was a thin sheet of paper, it wasn't like the paper we know of today. It was very thin, so they had to protect the paper. And so they would soak it in cold water to separate the horn from the bone. So like an actual horn, um, the, then it was heated and pressed flat and then the sheets could then be attached to a wooden paddle. And so that's how they made it. So for over 150 years, millions of American children learned to read from the New England Primer, that horn book that they had. And so um, that's how the children went to school during colonial times. And so on page 60, they have like a review that you can go over. And they also have an activity you can try to make your own horn book if you want as well. So it's really easy. You just have to have construction paper or notebook paper and stuff. So if you make one, you can show us soon on Thursday. All right, so that's your social studies lesson.